worth a ride But she just sits and she cries Knowing all of the signs Maybe she'll take the time That point six Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Well today I'm checking out the Lithgow LA101 crossover rifle in 22 lr Now this rifle here has created so much interest in the Australian market. It was announced uh, just over a year ago now and Lithgow Arms generated so much interest with it but on top of that they sought feedback from us, the Aussie shooter, on what we wanted to see in the firearm. So I mean it's a massive step for the company I mean because they haven't released a firearm for the civilian market in over 40 years so I mean it's a massive step so this is it here so let's have a look at a couple of things uh, first of all what comes with it obviously you've got your safety manual here and your warranty so please please read that um, there's a whole heap of information you need to know about the rifle mine's still sealed and the only reason is is because I actually downloaded the PDF version and read it before getting the uh, rifle I was that excited to get my hands on one there's also a spare spacer as well, so um, that just clips into the back of the stock so you can adjust your uh, length of pull easy enough. I'll just touch on that a bit more later in this review. So first of all, let me give you a run by of this rifle and you can just see the beautiful finish to it. Honestly, I mean, I was looking very, very hard at this rifle to see if I could find any sort of machining defects or marks and things like that. And I mean, there's nothing on this rifle that shouldn't be there. It just really is up there with a uh, custom finish. So okay, let's run into a couple of stats. First of all, the weight of the rifle is 3.1 kilo or 6.8 pounds, so just under seven pounds. So look, it's not super lightweight, but then again, it's not super heavyweight like a, a full-on Ventress rifle is. The overall length, depending on the configuration of the spaces, is one meter or approximately 39 inches. Now the barrel is a cold Hammerforge steel barrel. It's actually tapered. It's 53 centimetres or 21 inches in length and it comes up to a really nice 11 degree target crown at the end there. It's a 1 in 16 uh, inch twist, 6 groove and has a semi match chamber so I'm really expecting quite a lot from the rifle in the accuracy department. Now coming back and having a look at the receiver here, you can see a couple of safety things straight away. The uh, gas port to the side there obviously will vent gases away from the shooter in the event of a ruptured cartridge. You've also got uh, the safety at the back, which is a very straightforward two position safety. So as you can see guys, there's nothing in the rifle, it's, it's clear. I don't have any uh, ammunition around any rifles or firearms that I do reviews on. So if we cock it, you can see here that the safety has the red dot there. So obviously that indicates that it's ready to fire. So all you do is just pull back on the safety and then the trigger can't engage, you can't fire it but you can still cycle the action no problem at all so very straightforward no fuss and nice and simplistic and that's uh, good to see now the bases that are on top of the receiver here they actually come with the rifle they are like a picatinny weaver style base i've put on top here just some loopholed um, rings and also the loophole vx3 which is a 4.5 to 14 by 40 optic now, a lot of you probably be going, Aussie, that's a bit big for, for you, <laughs> in the sense of, you know, I always like smaller uh, hunting style uh, optics on my firearms. But I really want to test this rifle out with accuracy, so I thought I'd put the uh, larger magnification scope on it. So let's have a look at the bolt. Just to release it, all you need to do is just push back on the trigger, and then the bolt pulls all the way out. So you can see at the rear here, there's three locking lugs. Okay, the bolt handle in general is just a hard nylon and it just feels honestly good when you have it in the palm of your hand and cycling it. So the other good thing about it too is it's only got a short 60 degree throw. So those of you who are new to shooting might not understand what I mean with that. So I'll just explain it quickly. So when you've got it cocked, ready to fire, all that you need to do obviously to cycle it is, you know, up, back and forward again. But the short 60 degree throw of the bolt is, is just here. So what that aids in is really rapid or quick follow-up shots. So that's a really neat feature as well. 
Now the trigger on this is absolutely beautiful. I mean they're saying two kilo or 4.4 pound uh, trigger pull you know, from the factory. But um, my rifle, as you can see, absolutely brand new. Um, and I tested it with my Lyman trigger gauge and it came in at 3.7 pound. So uh, look, I'm not complaining, absolutely uh, brilliant. Supposedly, uh, shortly they're going to have one spring, or one kilo uh, spring, uh, trigger springs I should say, available. So you can lighten that trigger even more. But honestly, from running a snap cap through this, um, I was really impressed. So I'll tell you what, how about we just put one through now. I know it's only on video guys, but um, you know, you probably have to be here to appreciate it. But I just want to show you what I'm talking about. So magazine here I'll talk about quickly too. Five shot magazine, um, really straightforward. They are making 10 shot mags for it now. And they're also compatible with the CZ452 and 455 uh, mags. So absolutely brilliant. Okay, so as you can see, feeds perfectly. But just look at this trigger, it's so crisp. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Ejection's perfect on it as well. The snap caps I've put through it, no dramas whatsoever. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the stock here now. Now, this uh, stock is uh, adjustable for the length of pull, okay? So at the back of it, you'll see that there's a couple of spaces. So we've got one spare spacer, but there's two already installed in the rifle. And of course, you've got the uh, kick pad at the back. So if you do want to manipulate it or adjust it, all you need to do is just undo the kick pad and then you can um, adjust the spaces accordingly. If you're going to use the rifle as a hunting rifle, perfect. It's got a uh, sling swivel stud at the back and one at the front. So you can throw a sling on, no dramas at all. Now the actual stock is made from a uh, military grade injected molded nylon. So what does that mean in real terms? Basically it's as hard as nails tough as nails I should say. You can see um, the grips on it as well, they're just um, moulded into the actual mould of the stock. Nice feel to them, I've, I've absolutely got no problem with them. Even the trigger guard is all one piece, so the, the injected moulded nylon that they're talking about is supposedly the same one they use in the F-88 uh, assault rifle for the um, Australian Defence Force. So. Obviously, I'm not going to bash it around and you know and see what how much um, brutality it can take. But look, trust me, it's it's as tough as can be. So uh, look, the overall look of the rifle and everything, guys, is is just really nice. Um, they've really catered basically for all Australian shooters, and and I mean that was evident when they wanted the feedback from all of us. Um, you know, when they first announced the rifle was in production, or you know, or, or on the uh, drawing board, so to speak. So. Look, if you want to have this rifle for a bench rest style rifle, well obviously you've got the shorter flush magazine which obviously isn't going to interfere any way out at the range. Um, you know, you've, you've got the nice heavy or semi-heavy barrel um, guaranteed of some decent accuracy. Or if you want to use it as a hunting firearm where you've got the sling studs, you can get the extended 10 shot magazine which will probably sit down to about there. Um, you know, so, or if you just want the rifle for plinking, you can do that too. The great thing about it is it is available in left hand as well, so, you know, it doesn't matter um, who's out there, this rifle should cater to your needs. So, uh, look, at the end of the day, guys, and one thing I, I will definitely say now, even before actually firing this rifle, it's Australian made. It's made in Lithgow here in Australia by their 120 local staff. So, you know, by buying a rifle like this, we're supporting 120 local jobs. May not seem like a, enough, but as far as I'm concerned, you've really got to start somewhere and draw a line in the sand and um, you know start helping out some of our Australian companies that are going really, um, you know, looking at overseas markets and things like that because they can't compete here anymore. So yeah, I'm 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 pretty proud to be able to uh, support them. So uh, the price of this too, I think, is extremely competitive. Nine hundred ninety-five dollars retail. I mean, honestly, when you look at a lot of other rifles out there, I mean, look at the uh, Ruger 77-22, they're about $1,000. Um, look at a lot of the uh, CZ rifles as well. Um, any of the other rimfires, I mean, you can go up, obviously, Remington, Anschutz, and things like that. I mean, obviously, they're <laughs> quite, uh, quite a lot more. But just in general, I mean, it's just well-designed. And uh, I think for the price, um, if this thing shoots as accurate as what I'm hoping it does, Honestly, it'll have my vote. 
So um, on top of the the uh, chambering in 22 LR, the guys are coming out with 17 HMR, 22 Magnum, the 223, and 308. So I mean, that's going to really cater to uh, the needs of Aussie shooters. So anyhow, guys, look, let's not talk about it anymore. Let's get out on the farm and really put this rifle through its paces. Okay, so we've got the Lithgo set up, guys. Uh, what I've done is I've put a target out there at 50 yards to start with. I've got 10 different types of ammo here, everything from subsonic to standard to high velocity and hyper velocity. Now, because we've got a five shot magazine, I'm just gonna put five shots through with each. So it's still gonna be a fair amount of uh, rounds down range. So that'll give you a good indication of just how good this rifle is. So what we'll do is we've got to target up one of the high vis targets and it's got five little individual targets on it. We'll shoot the first uh, five different types of ammo at that. Then I'll take that down, we'll have a look at it, we'll put another one up and then we'll shoot the remaining five types of ammo. So look, there's a fair bit of ammo to get through, but I listened to you guys when you said you wanted to really see what the accuracy was like with a variety of different ammo. So let's jump straight into it and see what this lift goes made of. Okay guys, so let's have a look. We've got some varied results here with the different ammo. So first of all, we got the uh, 42 grain subsonic. We had a bit of a flyer there, unfortunately, but look, you guys know I always review it, how it really is. So let's just uh, measure the actual group size here. I'd say we'd have about an inch, just over. About 1.2 inches, okay. Would have been a lot better if we'd just got it up here. We would have been definitely under the inch at about 0.8. But anyway, we did have that flyer. Then when we come down to the uh, high velocity, the uh, 42 grain power point, I mean, that's just a great little cluster there. About 0.6, a 
of an inch, so I'm fairly happy with that. That's good. I mean, if I can keep shooting it, another five shots there would have just chewed the center out. So really, really nice. I'm very happy with that. Then when we go over to the SK rifle match, uh, yeah, spread a little bit, but still you can start to see some really nice grouping come in there. So we'll just measure that. About 0.8, about 0.8 of an inch, so not too bad. Then we come over to the high velocity, and that'll be the same, I'd say, yeah, 0.8. Started to group very nicely in the top group there, so we would have had, yeah, definitely well, just under half an inch, but uh, we did have the one flyer there as well. Down to the CCI Mini Mag, though, I'm pretty impressed with that. Uh, that was fairly consistent. I mean, normally I find varied results with it, but uh, that seems to be quite nice. So let's have a measure of that. About 0.6 of an inch. So, yeah, actually very, very happy with that. So, guys, look, as, as you know, look, I'm not in an uh, indoor range here. As you can see, we've got wind around us. The wind changes direction. We're in real conditions here. So that's what I wanted to do with the rifle is show you the accuracy, you know, in the real world. Because, obviously, if you're out and you're shooting, it's not the same as if you're at an indoor range. You know, you're in the real conditions. So these are the results. Let me put another target up, and then I'll put the other five different types of ammo through. We'll see what accuracy we can get. All right, so the final shots here, guys. We got uh, the Lapua Midas Plus there. I, to be quite honest, I was really disappointed with that because for such an expensive premium round, I would have thought that it would have shot better uh, in the rifle. But anyhow, this is the result, so let's give it a measure. Spread a bit there, 1.3 inches. 
Okay, we come down to the Remington Golden Bullet. Now keep in mind, this is just the bucket of bullets, okay? I just put it in an old Remington Golden Bullet container that I had when I bought the uh, rounds out here. So look, we, I thought for a moment there I'd have a couple grouping, but then we had the usual sort of spread because it is such a budget cheap round. So let's have a look. About 1.8 inches. Okay, so yeah, look, really a training round, isn't it? Now this was interesting here, the um, Federal Premium Gold Medal, okay, standard velocity, the target round. Okay, it's just, it's, it's really just imprinted like a ladder, hasn't it? But I dare say that just is a good indication of the wind here. So we're looking at about, about 1.2 inches, 1.2 inches. Then we come up to the uh, CCI standard, and I mean, they started to, to come in okay. We had one to start with, I think, the flyer there. A little bit tighter group. About one point, uh, sorry, uh, point 0.8 of an inch. And then looking at the CCI Velocita, point 0.9 of an inch. So the 42 grain uh, power points would be my choice. Alright guys, so uh, the whole family's come up to have a look at the target now. So we've got 100 uh, yards here, okay, so we've got 10 shots I put through just to show the consistency of the rifle. Now look, we had a couple that fly, well when I say flyers, look, not very much has it really gone off the main grouping area there. That's because of the wind, okay, we've got a bit of wind, but once again it's real conditions. So you can see the main six shots there, I mean that's great accuracy at 100. Okay, let's have a look at the extreme spread on it. About 1.9 inches. Okay, but if we look at the main group there, we've got about 0.6 of an inch. Okay, so that's what accuracy you could expect from it in conditions where you've got like good bench rest set up and no wind whatsoever. That shows the accuracy of the rifle. So, look, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, that's really good going because as I say, we're in real conditions here on the farm. So let's just uh, throw the rifle up to the shoulder and have some fun with it now. Okay guys, look, I'll wrap up with my final thoughts on the Lithgow LA-101 crossover rimfire rifle. Honestly, it's very hard to pick a negative with this. Um, I like to report on any negatives I find when I do a review, as you well know. But honestly, it's really stretching it to even try to find one with this rifle. For the price, being Australian made and the accuracy that I get out of this, I'm extremely impressed. I mean, what isn't there to love about this rifle? You've got spaces at the back so you can adjust it to your length of pull. You know, you're teaching a youngster to shoot. Ideal for that. It's rugged. You've got the Cerakote finish to it. And, it, and it's just a really nice rifle overall. So look, don't take my word for it. If you are actually interested in one of these, go into your local gun shop and have a look at one and see what you think. But anyhow, look, it's got the big thumbs up from me. I'm very impressed with it. and. Uh, 
honestly, good on you guys down there at Lithgow for uh, entering the civilian market again. It's uh, long overdue and I'm really happy to see that this is your product to make the comeback with. Alright guys, we'll finish up the review there. Thanks very much for watching and we'll catch you next time.